Lock oh the fuck God. in. Brian Gray. Woo. We're what seven up, hours deep. Doing? I just got out of bed and threw on a shirt for y'all. Good. How are you? You Daniel, dip? Why did you dip? First of <laughs> all, you need dip. to answer this right away. Why did you dip, Daniel? Why did you dip? Do you want the short answer or the long answer? Uh, we want the, long the long one. one the long one. one. We're, We're going to be here a while. You know, if you, if you made me bet on this, I would say, I think there's probably something fishy going on here. The fact that they may not have access to some of the best cards that have wed. I love the background there. Uh, yeah, we love was, the background. What's up? <laughs> That's fantastic. All the time. Um, and so um, that, so like they are, I think they are turning over a lot of money. I don't have, I don't have preview those numbers. I just have been in that. I've been watching them for a while. So. So here we go. The detectives are here and they're claiming that they have some kind of math to back up the odds of backyard pulling these four cards. When I saw, and I, I'll sort of say who they are, right? It's Leighton and Blez are two really big breakers in the hobby, some of whom I like, I spend my own money with, right? And so um, I don't mean to like, I'm not throwing darts at these guys. I don't have anything against them, but they both came out extremely, extremely defensive of backyard when, you know, I, I, and sometimes they, it's, they sort of acted like I was attacking them. them. Right here, the same guy who claims that Justin Fields has over a thousand 101 rookie cards is now picking and choosing which ones are considered product hits. It has come to my attention that there's some rumors floating out there about us. Well, I am here to address those rumors. It's being widely spread online that the odds of us hitting these four product hits. Logo Man is in here, guys. 2021 LaMelo Ball rookie year. The Logo Man is in here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the Logo Man is in here. AIH Sports, is there some hanky-panky going on over here? What do you think? Oh, my God! Yes! Oh, my God! Sam, you did it! Sam, you did it! It appears, in my opinion, there's some hanky-panky going on. Hey, Here you're he dropping F-bombs, bro. You got to stop. You got to chill no, out. Tell me to do don't tell time. me to do shit. You wanted to come on here. You wanted to come on here. What is going on, collectors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. Both of us have recovered from our epic eight and a half hour live stream that included uh, many special guests and many uh, simps and pumpers for the backyard breaks and excuse makers and deniers and degenerates all joined us on the program. I am joined again today by Orion. We are going to discuss some of the more recent events, some of the more updated things, some of the very failed and flawed arguments that people have made over the past couple of days. And then we have brand new information into the program regarding this beautiful LaMelo Ball, one of one logo man. Guess what, folks? We know the source of that case, and you're not going to believe where it came from. Ryan, what is going on today? Just hanging out, equally recovering from our eight-hour live stream and enjoying some of the commentary that I saw, you know, about it and uh, other people discussing this topic online. Absolutely, and a lot of the uh, a lot of it has centered around the data, uh, around particularly collector gurus. His tweet uh, certainly he's relatively well followed, and this got picked up by Darren Ravel and other outlets out there. But there was some significant data that we shared here on our show, and in fact, our second guest on that program was Triple Crown Twenty Four, and he basically took the odds of latent sports cards opening up his products. So uh, Leighton Sports Card opened up all of these products and he determined the odds of Leighton pulling all three of these cards, the Cade one of one Black Prism, the LeBron Triple Logo Man, and the T-Law one of one Gold Vinyl. And he estimated the odds of Leighton pulling all three cards in totality was a one in 555,000 shot. And so 
We have some relatively good data and whether or not you believe it or not, we'll talk about a little bit of that on today's show. What do you want to start with things? Uh, what do you want to start with first, Ryan? I think the thing I want to start with is the fact that Panini America has said nothing. And I think that should, you know, tilt the scales for some people and should say everything you need to know. Our video had 20,000 chat messages. There were 31,000 views. Uh, there are sources that say that, you know, Panini might've even been one of those viewers watching, but they've have not said anything yet on social media, on any of their, uh, any of the other outlets that they get, they could go on and get a message across. Look, I could literally jot down right now in two seconds, a statement that says, Hey, we believe in the integrity of our products, our dealers, our distributors, our manufacturers, and something like this, you know, couldn't happen. Or you could come up with any number of kind of legal statements to make. And Panini has yet to make one after six or seven days of this kind of investigation, controversy, whatever you want to call it. Backyards come out and make a statement. Blez, Leighton, Josh Luber, you've had other people rush to the defense of backyard breaks and Panini, but Panini themselves had said, have said nothing. I hope that speaks volume to people. It certainly speaks volumes to me. Absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, one of the prime reasons, you know, I think uh, Brokeback Brad or Brad, whatever his name was, uh, you know, asked us if we bought into breaks and this, that, and the other. Other commenters say, hey, we don't collect cards. Well, this is one of the reasons why, guys. OK, a company like Panini is seeing this type of PR surround their product, around their brand, and they don't even come out with a statement. They don't respond to anything. Like I said, just a two or three Senate response, just something, a tweet, a Facebook post, an Instagram reel, anything. They don't say anything. And a lot of times in this business, silence is absolutely deafening. Now, a lot of the discussion is surrounding these odds and this math. And there's obviously been the Leightons and the Josh Lubers and the Blezes out there that say this is not right or this is not math. But yet they propose no reasonable solution to this math. They don't propose their own data. They don't propose anything. They also don't say maybe what percentage this data is off because certainly this is probably not the exact odds. It's certainly in a ballpark and what, depending on where you stand on this, they could be off by 50%, 60%, 70%. But even if this data is off 50, 60, 70, 80%, we're still looking at extremely long shot type odds. Again, if this is still like a one in 300 shot, that means you could open up the products that Backyard Breaks has opened to hit these types of cards over and over again. You could do that for, let's say the odds are one in 200. You could open up the same product that they have for 200 years in a row, and this would happen just one time. So that's one in 200. When we start talking about one in a thousand, one in 10,000, we start talking about just complete long shot type odds. The other mistake I've seen several YouTubers make, I think one guy's name was Pancake Analytics. And he said, well, you need to go and look how much product they opened and then base the odds on that. Well, alert, Amber Alert, Pancake Analytics. Why did you put out a 30 minute video without doing at least 30 minutes of internet research? Our second guest on our program was Triple Crown. He actually already did that research. He took the Cade Cunningham, he took the LeBron Triple Logo Man, and he took the T-Law Gold Vinyl, and he based it on Layton's own case openings of these products. And he found to pull not one, not two, but three of these cards based on Layton Sports Cards volume was a one in 555,000 shot. And that is why one of the first questions that I asked our first guest, Doug from Mojo Break, who I think probably has insight into how many cases and how much business that Backyard Breaks is doing. I asked him how much bigger is Backyard Breaks versus latent sports cards. And his answer was, I think, 50% bigger or something like that. So you could divide the odds of Leighton pulling not one, not two, but three of these cards in succession. You could divide it by 50%, 60%, 70%. And you're still getting at once in like a, not once in a lifetime, not once in five generations. We're talking about once in civilization's existence type odds to pull these 
three cards. Excuse me if I think that sounds a little bit shady. The other thing that I saw a lot of talking points out there was that each individual hit has its own odds and it's its own independent event. Yeah, no duh, folks. It's just like if Steph Curry steps up to the free throw line and 99 times in a row hits a free throw. Of course, that 100th free throw that he shoots is an independent event. It, it doesn't depend on any of the 99 shots that he's made before it. So it has its own probability of making that. But once he makes that 100th free throw, folks, we can go back and look and say, wow, he just made 100 free throws in a row. How many NBA players have done that? How many players have attempted that? How, how rare is that event? And you can come up with a probability of that ha happening based on the free throw percentage that Steph Curry shoots, based on the volume of free throws that Steph Curry shoots. I, I heard so much terrible terrible analysis. Now, yes, I will give it to some of you. There are more variables when we're talking about this, but a lot of people are trying to introduce new variables like broke back bad was talking about a uh, Emmanuel Moutier or so, some guy that I'd never even heard of. Well, what if you pull that one of one? What if you pull this logo, man? Guys, we're not talking about that. We're talking about strictly these cards right here. We're talking about one, two, three, four cards. Stop trying to introduce other variables and other talking points. The talking point that Backyard breaks open up a lot of volume. Yes, that is a valid argument, but nobody brought any significant evidence to the table that they're breaking that much significant over and above like latent sports cards to still make the odds of pulling these cards more than a one in a, not a generational, we're talking about once in a humanity type event, something that will never ever occur again whenever you see something that is likely to never ever occur well forgive us for sounding the alarm that something might be a tad bit shady ryan what else would you like to talk about on today's show you know i think we should talk about another strange occurrence in the lamello ball a one of one that was hit by what's his name house of highlights and we were supposed to actually have him on the show the hobby house we were supposed to have him on the show um, this one, he pulled this one of one LaMelo ball logo man, rookie card conveniently when he had NBA player, Samuel Dallenbear in the house. Also conveniently, he purchased this case from somebody just down the street from him. That's right. Backyard breaks sold him this case. This guy came onto Twitter after it was known that he hit this card. Again, he, he conveniently had an NBA player there when he pulled it. He also conveniently, as he was opening the case, called that he was going to pull the LaMelo ball card. And again, this case came from Backyard Breaks. Now, Colin, should we get into the fact that this gentleman decided, I guess a few hours after he claimed or after he said he bought the case from Backyard Breaks, he said it was just a joke. Well, we invited him onto the show to clear that up. It would be something very easy to clear up. I'm sure he didn't pay cash for this case and he has some kind of receipt. And it would be something if you were joking, you probably want to clear up. Well, I called him twice at our appointed time this morning and he no-showed. So the hobby house has gone missing. We have sent out an all points bulletin for his whereabouts. And he lives near the vicinity of the Backyard Bros. And he's buddies with Shine. He's buddies with Josh Luber. And he's good buddies with all those guys down there at Backyard. So, Colin, what do you think about this very strange occurrence? Another product hit basically coming out of the warehouse of Backyard Breaks and getting hand-delivered to one of their little buddies down there in Florida. Well, it's just another oh, weird occurrence. And he said it multiple times. I only have a, two screenshots of him saying, hey, I bought it from Backyard. 
Um, never LOLing, never a little smiley face, never, you know, a little wink, wink. It was actually, it, it seemed like a genuine, a genuine conversation that he was saying, Hey, I bought this case from backyard, but we're happy about it. Hey, these guys are my boys. They live down the street from me. I think that story checks out. I did buy the case off of them, but that doesn't prove anything. And again, he's, he's right there. Okay. Just because again, every single hit that backyard breaks hits when it comes to, and we're not talking about Emmanuel Moutier. We're not talking about uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis. We're talking about the best cards, like one of one LaMelo ball rookie cards with a logo man on it. That is considered basically the best card in the entire set. Obviously each single one that is pulled is its own independent event. But when you start coupling it with the plethora of other cards that this company continues to pull time and time again, and we're not talking about from a few manufacturers, we're talking about a single manufacturer over the last, really over a very short period of time. We're not even talking about a very long period of time. We're talking about a very short period of time that they're pulling the el most elite hits out of products. And it appears even when they decide to quote unquote sell one of these cases to one of their boys, it also contains an elite hit. Certainly cloudies the picture certainly doesn't reinforce any support that I would give to backyard breaks. I am more convinced today than I was on our live stream on Friday that this is rigged. In fact, my odds of this happening is probably pretty darn close to 100%. And the fact that Panini has not even said a single word probably reinforces that even more. So Colin, we've had some new developments. Uh, some people have tried their attempt at math or explaining the math. We've had, a, again, another strange occurrence with a lamella ball, one of one showing up at a group break that he claimed he bought from Backyard Breaks. Colin, what do you think is going to happen next? in this ongoing investigation on these loaded cases that backyard breaks might be getting from Panini. I think they're just going to keep going. And uh, my, you know, look, I, I can theorize and I can guess what happens. If I were to guess right now, I think it's just somebody from Panini on a joyride right now. They know that their foot is out the door. They know that their job is in jeopardy. They know a new game is coming in town and they're going to come for their company or their licenses or the brand or the entire company. And I just think somebody from Panini or a group of people from Panini are joyriding. That's why you don't hear a peep out of them. And look, we know the people from Panini. We know these employees. I tell you what, I would trust anybody over at Backyard Breaks more than any single employee over at Panini. So that's saying a lot of how much disrespect I have for the people over at Panini. So look, I just think somebody's joyriding over there. I think Backyard Breaks is the beneficiary of that. I think they're in on it to a certain degree, not necessarily our, our lovely friend here, Sarah, but I, I think that they have to know what's going on. They're dumping cases that they know that are hot onto people down the street. And for those of you that are saying, well, why don't I just buy into Backyard Breaks? Well, you don't know that these cards aren't going to the Brokeback Brads and the homeboys over there, okay? You can search these guys that appeared on our stream. You can search their Instagrams and see where all these cards are going. And they're all buddy buddies and boys and very, very willing to step up for backyard breaks. And so something fishy is going on. I don't think these cards are going to random spots. I don't think they're going to Joe random. I don't think they're going to Joe collector. So if you want to, you can do whatever you want with your money. And I tell you what, if I'm going to break cards, I'd probably rather sit around on a stream with Sarah breaking the cards than some fat sweaty man that might take off his shirt mid break. But that's just me. That is just me. You guys are more willing to spend your money where you want to. But obviously what might happen next, I think is your question. Look, I don't think anything's going to happen. You're going to have the good old boy network, which is now the Josh Lubers and kind of these younger guys. They're going to take over. They're not going to care. They're not going to respond to you. Panini's not going to respond to you. We'll see what happens if Fanatic ends up taking over and we'll see if there's any change in this business. But Obviously, this is a developing situation. The investigation is still active. I think we sit here a week or two from now and probably have additional information, either confirming or denying what might be happening in this situation. What do you think should happen next? Well, it will be interesting to see when 
Fanatics takes over Panini. Does that shake up the business model for any of these guys? Do they look under the hood of some of these breakers and realize are they big? Are they not as big as people think? I have heard from a very reliable source, one of my most reliable sources probably over the last decade, that there are employees at Panini with some real sticky fingers. And that's all I'll say about that on the way out the door. So Colin, we will be here to cover any developments any further updates in this investigation. And if we have to go live again for eight hours, it's certainly something we are willing to do. Colin, Sarah's gone. Maybe we should dip as well. What do you think? Sounds good to me. All right. Peace out, guys. Peace out. Dip. Why are you dip?